guys, I'm Emily Powers and today I'm going to be painting this bird's nest with acrylic paints. It's going to be really easy and I think we're going to do it impressionist style um, so it'll be easier. Um, it, I'm going to show you step by step all the way through, so the drawing, the painting, all of it. And this is a 9x12 canvas panel from uh, the brand is Phoenix. I got it off of Amazon. Um, I pre-painted it with vermilion, which is this color. Um, all the colors I'm going to be using today are titanium white, um, this one is crimson, vermilion, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and this is light green permanent. You could mix it probably like with phthalo blue and cadmium yellow medium or something like that, and you could probably for instead of the vermilion use like a cadmium red um, or something similar. Um, I just saw some of this orange and I wanted to pre-paint it so that if anything shows through it won't be white because I don't want any of the canvas showing. And then my brushes, I'm going to use about a half inch filbert um, for the background and then a 3 8 inch angle and a um, round brush. This is not the small round that I normally use. It's a little bigger and fluffier. Um, so just whatever rounds you like to use. Um, so I'm going to spray my paint so that they don't dry out. And I'm going to start by taking my filbert and I'm going to mix up um, like a dark gray with the ultramarine blue and burnt umber for the dark areas of the background and you can make it more brown or more blue depending on which uh, you have more of but if you do half and half it kind of equals just a regular gray and I'm going to put some of that up here And I'm going to get some of the burnt sienna. Actually, I think I'm going to get the burnt umber and white to get a little lighter brownish. I need some of that gray to kind of tone it down and make it not quite so just plain brown. And put some of that color and I may have to do a second layer so I think I'm just going to kind of quickly just slap it on and not really worry too much about um, where I'm uh, I'm not going to worry a whole lot about what it looks like right now because you know you're seeing a lot of that orange so um, I'm going to go over it a second time so that it won't be so orange and then it'll look a lot better but this is the first layer and I'm just going to put in the colors that I see or something similar because since we're going over a second time the colors aren't exact it's not going to be that important because when we go over the second time we can get the colors more exact and we're not going to see a whole lot of what's under here. So I got some white, um, yellow ox, uh, yellow ochre, and burnt umber to make this light color. And I'm just going to put some of that right here. And it's like kind of light and dark all over the place. And I'm just switching between colors um, so that I can just get um, a bunch of these colors in different areas. And if I sound a little funny from what I normally sound like, it's because I am sick right now. So I kind of, my nose is kind of stopped up, so I'm not, I don't sound like myself right now, but. 
And also, I was going to say, um, I know today was supposed to be the squirrel tutorial, um, the winter squirrel, um, but I switched them, so um, today it's going to be the bird's nest, and then next week, if I'm feeling better, I'll do the squirrel. If I'm still not feeling good, I might just not do it, not post it Friday, and post it whenever I have it filmed, so, but I will try to have it out, so. I'm just flipping them around because this is going to be a lot faster and I didn't really feel like talking as long as I thought the other one would take. So I actually have it ready. I was going to do it. It's like I painted the practice painting for it and then I got sick the next day. So I didn't get to do it. But So if you like this video, please um, hit the like button and subscribe. I have some other um, acrylic painting tutorials. Um, some are easy, some are harder for those who um, are more experienced. Um, but there's hopefully something that you would like on there. So you can go check that out. You could just click my picture or my name under the video and it will take you there. So I'm just going, I'm not saying every time that I switch in between colors because I'm kind of going between colors pretty quickly. And under this bird's nest, I'm just going to do that dark gray with the burnt umber and ultramarine blue because I'm really not going to see what's under here, but um, it's going to be dark inside the bird's nest. so. And you could just do this part really quickly because I'm gonna to have to go over the second the second coat, so just slap it on and have fun with it. <laughs> this I really do like these um, paintings where you can just have fun and just put the paint on and not really have to worry about what it looks like. I mean we're gonna be a little more careful later, but okay, so I'm adding a little bit of red to the yellow oxide, burnt umber, and titanium white mixture, so it's like a light red. Light reddish brown, it's not really a light red, but it's got some red in it. And I'm going to put that, some of it in here. So I was going to do the filming of this yesterday, but we are renovating the bathroom and Mom was working on it, so I, you know, I didn't want the noise of that to uh, be in the video. But today I got rain, so I don't know if you can hear it. I can hear it a little bit, but, but rain is kind of soothing, so maybe some people wouldn't mind it. I don't know. I didn't have time to do a reference photo. I mean, I guess I could have, or not a reference photo, a uh, example painting. I could have, but with being sick, I just didn't. <laughs> I didn't feel like doing it. So we're kind of doing like a a test run, I guess, to see if I would even be good at doing the painting for the first time without uh, knowing what exactly I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, so it's almost filled in, and there's like some reddish colors for where the um, berries and things are in the background. And I got this new glass palette. Um, I've been using the paper plates, and they work really good, and they're cheap, so, you know, Especially when you're first starting, it is a really good palette to get instead of buying an expensive one. But I've been using the plates ever since I started, so I was kind of ready just to try something else. And I've only used it once, but so I can't really say 
whether I like it or not, because since I've only used it the one time, but I think it's pretty good so far. And it's really easy to clean too. So I'm going to dry this and come back and do the next layer. Okay, so now that this is dry, I'm going to go back and do my second layer. Man, this pen's already drying out. So I'm just going to get that gray again. And I'm going to put some more of that in. Actually, I may need to start with the lighter color so that I don't get that dark in there. So I popped this up on, it's really a rag up under here, <laughs> but uh, I propped it up because it was like a really bad shine from the lights that I have. So I hope that fixed it. I hope the, it's not like a funny angle or anything. And I'm going to add some of the red to it, give it another different tone, and put that in there. Put the bright red in these areas where that is. And there's some like gray color that's really light in just a few spots. I'm going to try to hurry up so that I won't have these colors dry out. And when green is mixing with red, it kind of turns muddy, but I'm not that worried about it in this because it is kind of, it's got brows and things in it already, so I'm not going to worry about that. And you can add some water so that it'll flow better. And adding that dark in there so that it won't be so green. And putting some brown so it won't have, it won't be as bright, it'll just have some neutral in it. And if you don't get the colors exact, it's okay. Just as long as it's covered and you like it, move on to the next part. Put some of that dark gray up here. Just switching between colors quickly, like last time. And 
and I'm going to try to make it to where it's not all dark or all light. So there's going to be some light, but also dark. So um, like in here, there's a little bit of light I'm going to put in, and then I'm going to take the dark, and it's mixing with that. And then I'm going to make it darker, and it's turning it green because I added a little bit more blue to the gray that time, which is okay. There's like tons of colors going on in here. I'm actually liking it because it's kind of wild. It's like, it's like warmer over here and then cooler over here. It's kind of neat. I really didn't mean it to be that way, but that's okay. I like it. So back on this side, it's pretty dark, so it's pretty colorful on this side, and then over here it gets kind of dull. So I'm just going to put a lot of this gray over here, and get some of my water. And I might add a little more blue in certain parts, just so that it's not so brown, blah, color. And there's some green. And I'm going to add the burnt umber to it to dull it. And there is, I'm just going to put the dark color under here, just so that the nest will have some dark under it, so there'll be depth. I don't know what that color was right there. I think it was red and white. No, exactly, but I'm just going to kind of do something similar. And then I'm going to get some of these warmer colors and kind of put some of that in. There, like you can't really tell exactly what it is. There's like all these dots and dabs of different colors. You can't really tell what it is. It's just there. So whether it's leaves or berries or sticks or whatever it is, you just want to give an indication of it. And once it starts drying, you kind of want to leave it alone, which it is drying really fast on me. So, of course, because if it's already dry, you can keep going on it. But 
it's when it dries um, and you try to keep going that it lifts off and you can see white on the canvas showing so you don't want that it was like a light creamy color kind of right in here And if you get some too bright or something, you can go back with the gray to dull it or cover it up or whatever. I'm actually going to get some of this blue and add some white to it to lighten it up and put some white blue over here. Down here. Okay, and then there's some faint sticks and stuff over here, so see any more water. So I'm just going to get some of this gray with the burnt umber and ultramarine blue and some white that was already in there and kind of put indications of sticks and things in here and if they fuzz out it's fine I actually want that to happen um, because you really can't see exactly where they're starting and stopping they're just kind of there so they're really fuzzy and faint There's like a lot going on in here. A lot of sticks and stuff. I really like these colors together. They're really, really pretty. Okay, so I think that's pretty good for the background. So I'm going to rinse my brush off and dry it. And then we can move on to the bird's nest. Okay, so now that this is dry, I'm going to take my chalk and draw in the bird's nest. So it's about, if you put your mark in the middle and then go out to the fourth, then it's just in from the middle point. And then it doesn't, well, it goes a little off from the fourth. So, this is the middle and this is the fourth. And it's just off from both of those. Okay. And then, there's like a circle. Or an oval, I should, I should say. An oval where the opening is. And then it slopes down. And it's not, it kind of, the point or where it stops is kind of over here. It doesn't do a complete U. It's kind of a sideways U. So it's kind of this way. So this is kind of where the bend is going to be and then it goes around and it's got like this funny part here where it's like attached to the tree and then you know on here is the branches and things and then the you mark the third on this side then the branch that is starting is going to be a little higher than the lower third 
and slope down right about right under where you had this line. So like right here. It's going to slope like that. And I guess it's starting over here and up. I'm not exactly sure. It's, you can't really see where it's starting or anything or something. I don't know. I can't really see over here, but there's going to be berries and stuff, so you won't have to worry too much about that. And then there's like a branch that comes up and a branch right here and here and they kind of tangle up into vines and things. And there's some vines here for a bunch of berries. So I'm just going to kind of do these little squiggly things. Just kind of showing where I want my berries to come out to. And then there's a branch coming down here. It's got berries on it. And there's like a, well, I think that's, well, I need to do the leaves. So there's like a leaf right behind here. You don't have to put these in if you don't want to because they're kind of orange and dead, but they are a, kind of a pretty orange. I think it makes it look more fall like. So I like it. I'm gonna put it in. You don't have to though. And they don't have to be perfectly shaped because it is an impressionist style. I'm not being super careful. Okay, so now I'm going to get my 3 8 inch angle. And first, I'm going to do the branches. So I'm going to. I had to just. <laughs> I had to water. It's just like lifting up off this. So I'm going to do some burnt umber and a little ultramarine blue. So it's not super brown. And I'm going to put that where the branch is. I'm going to add some of this white and yellow oxide on that one side so it's light with the white and yellow oxide and then it's the dark color. And I'm going to use it and make it like highlighting the branch. And I'm not making it perfect. I'm just because it is a looser style, so I'm not worrying too much about it. And to add some blue so that it's got an extra color in there. And then there's this branch that comes out like that. And there's some light bluish gray with this vine thing that comes out here. And it is just uh, kind of all tangled up and there's little spikes and things. They're kind of And you can't really tell exactly where it's going. It's like a knot right there. I 
And over here is where there's berries. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there they've got leaves that are, or branches and things that are kind of all over the place. There are vines and things. You can't really match up with any one thing. branch that's got some bluish colors for the berries over here and I'm going to add white on one side and dark on the other and the branches kind of go in odd directions here too and there's some browner um, leaves in here too. Okay. And I'm just going to add some more of that dark under here. And a little bit of the bluish color. And then I'm going to make that dark gray, add some water to make it flow better. I'm trying to make this equal amount so I don't want it too brown or too blue. It's kind of an equal amount of both. And I'm going to put that in here, so. So I'm just going to, way too much, put it in this circle area first. And I'm gonna put it pretty much throughout the whole nest, or most of the nest anyway, so if there's any color that's, and when I put the light colors, if there's any colors that uh, don't quite cover this base layer, then it'll have dark under. And then there's like a burnt sienna type color. So I'm going to add some of that and put that down there for that. I'm just going to kind of put this color right here so I remember where my uh, outline is. And then put the color pretty much all around it. And if you leave some of those other colors showing, it's okay because um, it'll just, you know, have more extra colors to give it some depth and things to it. And so I'm going to take the burnt sienna, and I didn't rinse my brush out, so it's got some of this color in there. And I'm just going to put that. I'm going to Squiggle it around so I get some irregular edges. Just put that in. And then I'm going to do it with this one. And 
it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it looks like it, a leaf shape. It'll be good. And then I'm going to get some of this darker color and put that right in here because it's like the leaf is like folded over. So you're seeing this part of the leaf. So that's right here. There's like a branch or something coming off right there. And then there's a leaf kind of coming off on this side. Hanging on to this nest, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to rinse my brush out. And if you wanted to, you could dry it and then uh, do the net, uh, take the chalk off if you don't want the chalk on. Um, but I actually, I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to dry it. Uh, take the chalk off and then come back and do the next step. Okay, so now that this is dry and I got the chalk off, we're going to do some of the berries, I think. So I'm going to get my round brush and wet it and get some of the crimson and burnt sienna. I feel like I called the crimson I mean, I'm red earlier. I don't know, I may not have, but I feel like I did. <laughs> and so the way I did to take the chalk off is I take my rag, wet it, and um, just gently wipe it away. Um, you don't want to scrub it or else it can take the paint off since you just put it on there. You don't want that to happen, so just be careful. So I'm going to put some of the darker berries in here. And they don't have to be perfectly round. They could be kind of oval shaped and just going to put the indication of them. And I'm not going to put all of them. I'm just going to put the ones that look a little darker. In there. Okay, and then I'm going to go over here and put some of them in. It's okay if you don't have a branch going to each one. If there's one that just like really looks odd, you can just quickly put a little branch in. But Some of them will be smaller and some of them will, some of them will be bigger just because some will grow um, will have grown faster because maybe they started growing before the others. So maybe some are fully matured and others aren't. So You can, uh, when you're loading, you just kind of spin your brush through it and it gets it uh, loaded again. Okay. Now that I got that, going to work on the bird's nest a little bit. So 
I'm going to get this dark color that we've been using and add a little bit of yellow oxide and maybe some burnt sienna. I'm just trying to make it a lighter color, but it's still neutral, so. And inside, it's pretty gray, so add a little bit of that blue to it, because inside it's got more of the blue colors. So I'm just going to put that in and some of them will be wider and some of them will be thinner. You just change the pressure of your brush. Actually I think I'm going to use my angle brush. I think I'll get thinner lines because that round is kind of a big round for this. So just put different uh, size brush strokes and things. I'll put some of them on the outside too. Give it some extra something. And I'm going to add some of the blue and some of the brown, but I want it more blue because inside here is a little bit more blue. I feel like it's too bright to take that and kind of lift some of it off. I want you to be able to see some of the sticks and things down there, but I don't want it to be too bright. So I'm just going to kind of go over some of that. Then I'm going to add some of the more brownish colors. So I'm going to add some white to this color over here that I made. And oops, that's too light too. I think I'm going to just take the burnt number straight and put some of that in. Get the bluish color. Okay, and then I'm going to take burnt sienna and burnt umber and make a dark color with that. And put just do different shapes and things. I'm going to put putting this reddish brown color near the um, bottom of the nest because it's kind of more brownish over there. And then more near the top, it's got a little more of a bluish and whitish tint to it. Okay, I'm going to go with my next color, so I'm going to make a burnt sienna and yellow uh, ochre and tint it, turn it down with the burnt umber a little bit. See how that goes. That's okay. You don't want to put too much these brighter colors though because you want that dark color down there. 
then I'm going to take some of my white with these. It's got some of the blue and the browns and the colors in there. I'm just going to put that in there. And right here, I'm just kind of putting it in all directions. And then I'm going to take some of the yellow. the white and put some of that in maybe get some of the brown so it's not so it's better I don't want it too yellowy and put some of that in and they don't all have to be crossing this way because like in the picture they're kind of everywhere so you can put some kind of facing more down so it doesn't need to be all matched up it can be kind of irregular And then I'm going to get some of the white with this blue. So it's really more of a light gray um, around the top of the nest. And I'm going to just put some of that in these areas. And you can add some water so it'll flow better. And I'm going to get some of the blue and the burnt umber and put some right in here where the middle is so you can really see where that is. I don't want to go too far into it. Okay, and I'm just going to do that for the moment, for that part. Then I'm going to take some of this burnt sienna and the yellow. And I'm going to put that right in here. And I just get straight burnt sienna and put some of that in, maybe a little bit of the burnt umber so it's not super bright. I'm just going to take some of the white and put a highlight right there. And I'm going to take some of this dark color and kind of put some in back there. And then I'm going to 
going to take the white and lighten this up and put it where the leaves are on this, where the highlights are, I mean, on this leaf. And then get some white and just put that right there where it's brighter and there's there's the vein the veins are pretty light and if you like doing leaves I have a fall leaf um, tutorial where it uh it's all about the leaf, pretty much. I mean, the back, I do the background in it too, but it's, um, I'm teaching the leaf. So if you like doing bright fall colors, then that would be a good video to look at. And then I'm going to get the light and put it over here where that is. And maybe get some of the vermilion color and add it over there. It really needs to be brighter right here, so I'm just adding the light. Right there. And then I'm going to get some of this gray and put in the areas that are darker. There's some white right along here. And then some kind of areas where you can see the veins. So Here's I'm just kind of playing around with it, seeing what I like better. And there looks like there's some yellowish color in here somewhere. I'm pretty going to put in. And then the light is hitting it right there. There's like some branches that are coming off this. Some dark ones and some light ones and different things. And then there's also the leaf that we tucked in back here. So I'm getting the burnt sienna and then the dark gray. And kind of blending them together. And then getting the burnt sienna and yellow oxide and white. And putting it back there. Okay. So 
going to rinse that out. <clears throat> Excuse me. And get the round brush again. And now I'm going to take the crimson by itself and put that as like the highlight and put some, actually I'm going to start over here, put some of that over here. So I'm putting it on the ones I already got and on the ones that I haven't put yet. And you're going to be going to see through at first. You're just going to have to put them back. And some of these I put in because there's berries on top of them and so you're really not seeing a whole lot of them. There's just the indication of them under there. I'm going to take some of that and put another one in right there. Put some on the branches just for like a red tint. Okay, so now I'm going to put in more berries. There's like tons of them over here. And again, do some small and some big. some on top of others and Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to put some of the red on top there. Mix that out. Okay, and I'm going to take my angle brush now and do the finishing branches on there. So I'm taking the yellow ochre and some white and there's not a whole lot of it but there's a few yellowy branches in here. Just so that it's not all down here, I'm going to put a little bit of it up here. And don't worry about covering the berry, we can go back over it. Okay, and then there's some white with a little bit of blue. That's kind of green because I had that yellow in there, so I'm going to mix my brush out. Let's 
also get the white and a little bit of blue. And a little bit of brown just so it's not weird blue color. And I can put it in here. The light is really shining on here, so don't be afraid of making it really light. to make a little bit of a light yellow so that there's some light down here too. And just put it uh, to fill in these spots that don't have very bright and you don't want to get it in this dark area either. And then straight white You still want to be able to see that dark under there. And I'm going to get some of the dark color we had down here and just kind of put a little more dark there so you can see the transition between them. And the white's kind of already drying, so it's almost like I'm dry brushing over and it's turning the white a different color. Okay, so the nest looks pretty good. I'm going to work some more on the berries now. So I'm going to take the red and the vermilion mix them together put it on these that are brighter and it's kind of bright on mainly one side I'm going to put it on mainly the one side that's brighter. Which is the upper right side. And I'm going to take this dark, <coughs> excuse me, put it over these areas that are kind of showing through. Where you can see the branch or the uh, background or something like that. Just going over it so you can't see that. And if this paint were thicker, you probably wouldn't have to do this for as many times. I don't know. But this is a thinner paint, so 
you can see through to the other side. Okay, and then there's, you add some white to it, it brightens it up. Normally I wouldn't add white to red to get the highlight color, but this has more of a white, pinkish uh, highlight. So normally if you were going to put a highlight with red, you would add yellow to it to make it more orange, or maybe just a little bit of white, but it is more of a pinky highlight in this picture, so I'm not really worried that it's turning pink. It really isn't that pink right now, it's more of an orangey, but the bright highlight is going to be pink. Okay, and I'm going to brighten up some of these that I think would be brighter. More of a red. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little more white to it and add it to the ones that would be brighter. And I'm not being too super careful with it since it is a looser style. Okay, and then you add a lot of white to it. And this will be probably the one of the brighter if this isn't the brightest, I might go with the straight white. Just can do like little dots on them. You don't need a whole lot of paint in your brush to do it. Okay, so now I'm just going to take straight white and go on these that are brighter and not all of them are going to have it just the ones that are the closest to us in the light actually that one would not have it it would be darker And just put it bright on these that would have it over here. And not even all the ones that have the highlights before it will have this super bright. Okay, I think it's pretty good. So you could put like some birds. Uh, birds eggs in here if you wanted to you could just like look up a picture of them and put that in so I'm gonna sign it with my Faber-Castell Fit Artist Pen I like these because I have a hard time doing this fine of a line with uh, with my uh, uh, brushes. I can't think of the word. 
so uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much done, I think. So um, this is the uh, schedule I have. So normally we were uh, supposed to do the squirrel, so I'm flipping these two. So this one is out and this one's after it. So this is the practice for it. So if you want to see that tutorial, it'll be out next week. And then we're going to have the cabin and the fish and all those out later in March. So I hope you enjoyed this and we'll paint it. And it was really easy. And with the looser style, it's really fun. So I hope you enjoyed it and will like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye.